Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Today, uh, you join me in my very messy office. It's been very busy. Uh, everything's a bit of a, just like a storm blowing through here. Very busy. One thing I definitely need to sort out today is a Renault Clio Renault Sport 200 EDC, whatever the hell it is, thing, car, that we've had returned to us by a finance company. Seems like it's a bit of a running theme on this channel, wasn't it? I must be such a dodgy dealer. The long and short of this story is we sold this car to a first-time driver. It's like an automatic, but it's like one of those fancy double-clutch gearbox things. It's an interesting choice for a first car, but that's what she wanted. The test drive was quite hairy. She's a bit of a dodgy driver, but, you know, we got it sorted. It was £8,300. She paid £300 as a deposit in cash or card or whatever. And the rest was on finance through a third-party finance, not our own. Yeah, off she went, drove it, no problems, didn't hear anything for about five months I think when she said she thought it was like kind of like jumping around in between gears and doing weird things you know a like clutch was slipping type of thing so in fact we didn't hear from her we heard directly from the finance company because she contacted them not us so I think once we spoke to the finance company and said well we haven't heard anything so I think she'd spoken to the finance company they hadn't done anything for weeks standard kind of thing with them uh, and then it was like our fault that nothing had happened for three weeks, even though we knew nothing about it. But we said, take it to our specialist gearbox people and have them check it over. They checked it and said it's not something they can do because it's an automatic and they do manuals, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but at this point, I said, look, it still drives. It's still, you know, fit for purpose. I think if there is a problem, it's down to like the clutches in there, which are going to be worn out probably by your driving because there wasn't an issue before. And this kind of went on and on. We thought she was going to go away and see if she could get a price and two months later, the finance company have got in touch again. So we're now, from five months, we're now seven months. In fact, it was seven months to the day it's been dropped back to us, which was this Saturday, because the finance company, well, if, you, if you're not, they've got a quote, and it was £4,000 for this gearbox, which is like four times the amount of profit we made on that car in the first place, half the price of the car. Um, said, well, if you're not going to help us with this, then we'll have no right to, uh, no, no choice but to support her right to reject it because it's happened within the first six months, and um, that's how the Consumer Rights Act work. Which is something these, these finance companies like to do, like tell you how the Consumer Rights Act works, but while lying to you, because then I'll turn back immediately and say, well, actually, the Consumer Rights Act says that it has to have been there or developing at the time of sale. And they're like, oh, yeah, but with the absence of any proof that it wasn't there at the time of sale, we'll have to support their right to reject the company. Don't worry, because we have got proof. We've got the PDI, which is our pre-delivery inspection, that says it worked perfectly fine. We had an MOT. We've got all of our paperwork and everything, and the fact that she's driven it five months before having raised any issue whatsoever, which suggests to me that there probably wasn't a problem. Anyway, you don't really get very far with these finance companies. They're just like, oh no, six months, six months, as if it's just completely our problem. Um, I've got no choice because I said, look, I'll give you 500 quid and then bumped up to, I'll give a thousand pounds contribution towards it. But that's all the profit we made from the car. I don't really want to pay much more than that. They said, oh no, we're going to have to, we've got no, no option but to give her 300 pounds back, return the car to you and we'll just get a refund from you. But I'm going to have to go out and have a look at it now and give them a little report on what we think it is. And probably what we're going to have to do is buy it back from them at a discounted rate because of the mileage and the damage and all the things we find and just suck it up buttercup and yeah sell it on you know auction or something or you know fix it I mean, it might even be a problem to be honest as far as i'm concerned but we will take it out for a spin so we'll head out and let's have a look at this car right so we've got our two key cards chap turned up on saturday from shipley to drop this thing off to us toby's probably got some footage of that and here it is. If I pull it out, Toby can give you a little cinematic view of this bad boy, and then we'll have a look around it and drive it. Right, so there it is, as you can see, it's not looking at its best. It's certainly not looking the way it looked when it left here because we just had the wheels refurbished and I can't remember if we'd had them done 
prior to agreeing a sale or we did them as part of the sale agreement i can't remember but i certainly remember them having been freshly powder coated now they are absolutely battered this is the most comprehensive wheel curbing job i have probably ever seen because every wheel is battered it's not just one that gets a battering is the near side driver's front the worst one it's so hard to say because they're all so shit to be honest um the near side front one's also got bits ripped out of the tire so i mean i don't know if that's technically okay or not but in, a, in an ideal world you want to replace that wouldn't you because you've got bits ripped out of well, in fact there's loads there's loads yes you want to replace a tire because you don't want that do you i mean you're relying on that that's just where it's been pinched up against the curb every time they've mullered it into that you can tell it's not been cleaned very well because it's a load of brake dust on there which it's got a really meaty pad on there and it's got decent discs so i reckon they've been braking really heavily getting them really hot for all that amount of dust to come off but obviously they've not been cleaning it as well as you can see it's just it probably doesn't show very well on camera but like around all the badges and everything it's all moldy and green and sadly it's it gets even like cleaning the outside's easy but the inside is absolutely filthy as well seems like one of the key batteries has gone dead um we have got a one pence coin so that's the best thing we found in there but obviously you can see it's a little bit grubby um someone's had a plastic seat cover maybe while it was at the gearbox place in there but that's just tucked under the seat now crumbs everywhere it gets a lot worse on the other side but in fact let's have a look at the boot first as well because that's not great either we've got something like sticking out here i don't think that's factory it certainly wasn't there when we sold it we'd never have sold a car like that some random tape hanging out of it right, there we go so yeah to me because there's a gap missing in the middle you can see it was stuck there and it was stuck there i reckon they've stuck something into that but why and then obviously it's ripped out and that's why it's hanging out like that so what did they put in there like some stupid light thing if you put a light in there would it still close i don't know um something stuck on there as well yeah i don't know but that that and all of that is not oh look the little trim's missing that's there oh what a reversing camera they could well have had a reversing cam yeah that's probably what it was wasn't it so it probably just stuck yeah just out of you can almost see where something was rubbing so they had a reversing or what's it camera on there and that's why this is off which they've absolutely muddered look at what moron has tried to get that out how would you do that much damage trying to get that cover off they've like sawed it there ah oh, so they've sawed and like drilled it for the cable to run out so they had a little gap look so they've made a hole there like that so just damage it and you know if you ever want to return it don't worry about it because the finance company is going to back you um we'll throw that in the boot i mean that would be that would be mucky and lazy wouldn't it but when you see inside you'll understand that doesn't really matter i don't even know whether that's someone's top or what but we've got all kinds of crap in here um it's a bit someone's uh might be a pillowcase maybe oh it's got some of that tape on it as well so god knows pringles lid some cans of coke or an old box of coke uh jack is missing that wouldn't have been the case and if this hasn't got uh a pump or whatever in it we would have supplied it with a pump as well we keep the green slime what they called slime kit or whatever there so yeah that's where they've done it awful i probably wouldn't have even spotted that if i hadn't seen the tape but there we are um again could be the worst wheel disc is good and there is seven or eight mils of pad left on that so there's loads obviously had a kitty in the back here drinking champagne by the looks of it and eating fish food you know you get like goldfish food tell me that multicolored detritus in there doesn't look like goldfish food so oh and the smeggy remains of a child's grubby little fingers god bless them um huh or a drunk person yeah it could be um basically the same as a toddler isn't it 
yeah. And just a bit more rubbish in the front, some vape stuff, some packets for soothers and whatever. But luckily there's our original paperwork. Look, I'm sure that's comprehensive and everything that we sent the car out with will be there, won't it? Yeah, you can see where we're going with this, can't you? Um, I'm gonna hop in, just double check the glove box. We'll have a look at what paperwork we do have and then we'll take it for a spin. Right, so I think I double checked the glove box. We've got books, driver's handbook. Now, is the, just to, just to be sure, is the service section in there? Well, there could be actually service sheets, but, oh, there are, okay. So, yeah, there it was last serviced by us, 81,477. Now, I have to admit, I didn't think we had the service book, that's just me. When I hastily looked at it before, hastily, hastily looked at it before, didn't think it was in the owner's manual. It's a weird thing that some manufacturers do. It's now on 83,335, so it's on less than 2,000 miles. But I just, you wonder how those 2,000 miles were covered. So we have got our service paperwork. That's a good start. We've got confirmation of taxing here, which is stuff that we provided when it went out. Once we'd helped the person tax it, there is the new keeper slip from the old V5. There is our invoice, £8,300, trying to give too much information away. Our warranty document, our PDI, which they've given back to us. They haven't even kept their own copy. Um, which says when it was serviced, it goes through without putting the customer's name on. You know, there's all the things that get checked when we do our 50 point check, go through, check things are working, you know, check the clutch and gearbox and everything's okay, check the condition of the belts, tensioners, all that sort of stuff. Just so that everyone's got peace of mind that everything's been done. Then also here's some kind of like non-value, not non-value, but we do zero invoices to ourselves. So the customer has a record of all the service work they had done. So we just serviced it. That was that. And we also did three new tires, uh, offside front, ball joint replaced, and the parking brake was adjusted prior to sale. So that's all the work we did, but the glaringly obvious missing thing is the V5. So we don't have a log book. The funny thing is, that is a massive nuisance, isn't it? Not having the log book. You can't just sort of sell it on straight away or whatever. You have to apply for one and wait weeks for it to arrive. Um, but I guarantee if I brought that up with the finance company, they'd say, oh, okay, seeing as the price of doing a V62 application, which is the application form you do to get a new V5, they will just offer us £25, I expect. But, oh, well, not £25 off. No worries about the massive inconvenience of it all. Yeah, so uh, I did pop the bonnet. We had a quick look under there, which the sound deadening on here seems to have like fallen apart maybe it's just done that as a part of its time i can't imagine it would have gone out like that from us maybe they live in a highly mouse infested area i don't know but you know who knows these things happen uh the only other thing i can really spot is the coolant doesn't look like coolant it just looks like water you can't really look i thought for a minute for like a worrying minute it didn't have any coolant in it but there is water in there but i don't think it's been topped up with the right stuff have a look at, look at the condition of our oil. It looks pretty good, as you'd expect, having been serviced a couple of thousand miles ago. Um, and the only thing I noticed is that the cap for the, oh, um, well, the cap for the washer bottle is missing, and it's also not bolted in. Again, I can't believe it went out like that, but, you know, things get missed, I guess. Who knows? Anyway, the real important thing with this is how does it drive? Is there a gearbox issue that makes it unfit for purpose? The purpose being driving it around. Um, or not. There, there could well be. You know, things happen with cars. So I guess we'll hop in, we'll take it for a spin and find out what's going on. Another thing I didn't point out, I think, is they had like uh, caravan towing wing mirror things on. I know Toby got a little shot of those earlier so we can show you. One's still on there and one's just got the sticky pad. And... There's kind of some residue on the dashboard. It'll probably go away because Dan now remembers having spoken to him briefly and said, look at how they installed a rear camera. 
he said oh yeah that was on there and they had like an apple carplay thing on the dashboard here that was stuck to the dashboard as well so luckily it looks like that will remove clean up fairly easily so far so good we're in third gear fourth gear back to third I guess we're gonna have to give it a bit of welly to find out exactly where any problem may be. We have got three quarters of a tank. Bloody hot the day, I wonder if the air conditioning still works. Yes, it does, just about. God, it stinks though. I don't think they've been using that much. A bit of a squeaky brake pedal, but I wouldn't say that's necessarily ground to reject the car on. So far, just potting around, no problems whatsoever. Supposedly, the issue was between second and third, but I wonder how bloody hard they were driving to notice a problem. Let's turn the fans down a little bit. All right. I'm having flashbacks of the Porsche 911 here. Gearbox issues. Wherefore art thou? Right, down to second. Second and third was the issue. Works lovely off the paddles. Nine times out of ten, I want to give people the benefit of the doubt. And a lot of the times, you know, people will bring cars in and they'll say, oh, it's got this problem and it does this and it does it makes this weird little noise or whatever. And the mechanics and the team and everything might be like, I can't hear anything. And, I, you know, it's not making any noises whatsoever. And I'll be like, okay, all right, I understand that. And it's frustrating, but I doubt they'd make it up for no reason. But <laughs> the longer I'm in this job, the more it seems like people are making up stuff for, well, not no reason, to get out of a responsibility that perhaps they don't want anymore. This thing flies third. Let's try putting it into RS drive. Renault Sport mode is on. We're in automatic. Come to a stop, so we're in first. Makes cool little DSG farts. Not making any weird gearbox issues. I guess we've probably got to get it hot, haven't we? I think I'm going to give them their report on all the damage that there is on it. But I'm going to say that I probably want to drive it home tonight for a bit of a longer run to give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, I do need to plug it in. But I guess where do you draw the line? If the car drives perfectly fine and there's no warnings on the car, you plug it in and it's got some kind of historic fault for a gearbox or something, that something happened at some point, is that grounds to reject a car? Once upon a time, something happened? First, second, third, fourth, lovely with a shame I haven't got a better microphone on the back it makes it's like really subtle but a lovely little kind of DSG type burp from the back hear that hopefully you can hear that it's almost not even that much of a noise it's almost like a percussive feeling inside the car Jesus what a place to try and ever take yeah what's he looking at me for guy's trying to overtake a push bike in s spends and because i come along on my side of the road he's got a strop arm on me i wasn't even doing half the speed limit right take it out of renault sport mode again back to normal automatic we're in second lovely smooth change into third we go so we're kind of just rolling along in fourth if i stab it down to drop straight down to third to 
time, quarter past three. I want to keep going for a little bit more because I want to get it warmed up. Of course, this bloody thing doesn't have a temperature gauge on it, does it? Let's put it in Renault Sport mode, try and keep it high in the rev range in manual mode. Put it across to the left for manual. Really give this some abuse you know worst case scenario let's see something bad happen put my mind at rest that something really is wrong with this car and it's not just some bullshit that someone's decided they no longer want the car so i'm trying to really kind of like stress test it stop put it into auto back to normal driving mode to take it out of Renault Sport because now that it's warmed up is this where it's gonna slip just driving it normally no is the answer you understand how frustrating this is and I'm not looking for sympathy and all that sort of stuff I always say in all my videos I'm not I'm just, it's just raw honest what it's like being a business owner never mind being you know a car dealer but is it is this car definitely 100% can I say with absolute certainty it is perfect and it has never slipped up and it's never had an issue or any of that sort of stuff of course I can't it's what year is it 2014 i think so it's a 10 year old car it's got 83,000 miles on it now you know it's highly unlikely that it is absolutely perfect because there is tens of thousands of moving parts in this car and something may slip up but if you got in this car for a test drive today it wouldn't be this filthy i might add you would drive this and think what a cracking car it's really fun and how did you find the gearbox yeah great really responsive snappy any problems with it no I don't, I don't, so, you know, we'll plug it in, obviously. I think I'll spin it around here. I was gonna go back the main roads, but let's just keep trying it through the lanes. Some nice hard driving. And where do you draw the line, I suppose, if there's a minor thing it says about the gearbox? Um, does that mean I should just give them a refund after seven months. Even if it's driving perfectly and there's no warnings on the car, etc. It's uh, a tough one to decide. Right, I'm gonna leave it there. I'll leave this camera recording, but I'm not gonna bore you with the entire journey back. I'll leave it recording though, so if something does happen negative, then it will be captured. And I won't just be giving you like my first hand report of it. It will be on here on the camera. But Toby, if you're watching this now, you can cut this here. And if the next time you see me, I'm back at the garage and we're plugging this thing in, then nothing else happened. But if you happen to see me in this car again, then you'll know that probably something went wrong. Yeah, we're just trying to gauge ourselves what's actually what, because obviously we're just being pumped back in car. Yeah, 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 we've been out for a drive in this afternoon, it's driven absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for your time, mate. Thank you, speak soon. Cheers, bye. Very nice chat with James, who actually went through the car and spoke to me. Yeah. Um, he said it did have faults, he said we never told her it wasn't safe to drive. Um, yeah. He said that she took it away came back within 10 minutes going, I can't get above 20 miles an hour and just left it with them. He said, we had a nightmare over there that she wouldn't ever come and get the vehicle. Yeah. Um, he said, I went for a drive and it was absolutely fine. He said, when it first initially came in, it did hang gears, it wouldn't change gear, it was very jolty. Um, he said, and then upon clearing code, drove absolutely fine, but then they come back. 
um, he said, so there's definitely stuff going on. He said, obviously, we'd all like to point to you at the wheels because he's been smacked off of everything. He said, I can't really no, no, point no. at that. He said, so, well, it's very similar to the four power shifts, unfortunately. So he said, the only way that we suggest to do this is it needs a new clutch pack and control unit. Um, he said, we were only allowed, we, when it comes to customers, we always had a worst case scenario. Hence why I should have been told between two and a half, three thousand to have it done. He said it's going to be one of those ones, unfortunately, it's going to be an intermittent that it will come and go. Strange, isn't it? Because I can't imagine that if it drives fine, that it needs touch packs. Do you know what I mean? It sounds more like a fault comes up with some kind of sensor or whatever. Yeah, because that's to me, when I see short circuit to earth on two sensors. I can't say there's a digital control module or something, but, yeah, but it's, like two it's two. physically working fine the majority of the time, as long as the computer's happy. Yeah, because you think that it's got a speed sensor one, speed sensor two, Look, shift drum to and changing gear to on the drum, whereas the speed sensors aren't picking up. Mm. But then it would take a long time to change gear. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think two of these are active and two of these are memory. Because I guarantee if you went and drove this for another hour or so and got some heat into it, you'd probably find those two memories would turn into currently active. Yeah, I did try to give it real hell for your lanes, trying to figure out. But yeah. At the end of the day, there is something. Mmm, well, we'll tally up how much it's going to be then because, in a sense, that means that within the first six months we've had our chance to fix something that we couldn't find and we couldn't fix it. Have we used that or not? I don't know, but we'll do some research and we'll probably finish this up tomorrow when we decide, so see you tomorrow when we've got more news. One week later. Uh, should we do an old sponsored search? I bet I won't find anything. Found it. To do system scan. <gasps> so, there it is. Yeah. That's a gearbox. TCM, no issues. Yeah. Sweet. So, might simply have been the battery and whatnot. So. So that's really good news. So hopefully that just means that it was the battery. I don't know if we've discussed this or not, but basically we did a lot of research and it seems like a lot of people were saying that these, they're very kind of voltage sensitive. We put a new battery in it and Dan kind of cleared the codes again. I think maybe tried to calibrate the gearbox. I can't remember. But basically there was also like a loose wire on a terminal underneath the battery apparently on, on some kind of block thing. Um, so I was hoping that might have been something to do with it. Put all that back together. Toby drove it home, which is how many miles home? 50? Was it an hour and a quarter or something? It takes about an hour. About an hour. About an hour there, an hour back. No issues whatsoever. Um, and once I'd gone back and said, look, we're going to put a price together for how much we need to deduct for all the damage that's been done, uh, they came back and said, oh, okay, well, the customer's preferred option is to still have the car fixed. So I don't think we actually needed... Basically, my complaint was... We're not paying for a four thousand pound gearbox replacement because the car drives perfectly fine. You know that's not what it's down to. Hopefully we've nailed it with this, and maybe we'll be able to uh, to get it returned. But while we're here and we've been using the Top Don RT Diag six hundred S, just to check for codes then afterwards, because once Toby had driven it, we haven't plugged it in since then to see whether it actually had any codes come back, which it hasn't. So that's a great result. These are really handy. This is about 120, 130 pounds. Seriously good bit of kit. Really nice screen on it. You can do quite a lot of stuff with it. These along with the things like, I don't know, my JS 1500 jump pack. These items plus a few more. So we've got the RT Diag 800 Bluetooth diagnostics machine. That's like a bit of a posher version of this. JS 2000, that's a bigger jump pack than that one. The JS 1500, that's this one. Uh, this RT Diag 600S and they do their top scan as well, which is like a little plug-in connects to your phone dongle type thing. As this video goes live, they are all 20% off via the links in the description. Um, it goes to an eBay store and you need to use a code HOTDEAL20 to get 20% off. Absolute bargain. Great, great bits of kit. They really are really amazing quality for what you pay. And the displays and everything are really nice. So. Yeah, my little gift to you, if you're looking for another of those bits and pieces.
get on the eBay store, use the code HOTDEAL20, and you can save yourself a few tasty little quid. Right, obviously probably quite a long video this, but we have now finally found out what's going to happen. Once, obviously I said I went back and they said, oh, actually you should really like it repaired. I went back to them and said, look, um, we've, we think we've cracked it. You know, we think it's this battery and blah, blah, blah. Um, so, you know, let us know. We can drop it back to her if you like. And she says, oh, okay, well, I'll pass it on. But I think the customer's concerned because she's been told by, you know, the gearbox place that it's a three or four grand repair. And we fixed it within a day by changing a battery that she's just not convinced. Bear in mind, we spoke to the gearbox company and they just said, yeah, we always quote worst case scenario to the customers because you don't want to be like, oh, it's a thousand pounds and then that's not enough or whatever, you know, taking the gearbox out again. Um, so, but I understand that if you haven't got mechanical knowledge, that's fair enough. Um, so we put together a quote or an estimate, or a quote, I guess, to rectify all the issues that were with the car now that we got it back. So we sent them an estimate. Uh, so it needs four wheel refurbishments, £65 plus VAT each. Um, I put down £100 for a full valet because you saw it's, it de desperately needs one. Uh, three tyres, which were like pretty much budgets, 205, 45, 17s, three of those at 65, 95 each plus VAT. Uh, I put down, what's I put down? 88 quid for a replacement boot trim panel. Bit pedantic, but you know, someone might come and pick at the fact that someone's sawn bits out of that. And then the other bit is fair usage of the vehicle. I only went for 35 PMI. I know a lot of people in the comments will say 45 PMI, that's whatever, whatever. Ah, uh, there's no, there's no golden rule on you know, fair usage. A lot of people say 45 PMR because that's what citizens advice bureaus say that you can claim back for your mileage if you're using a, you know, a company car or whatever. But, you know, it, it, and then other people argue it's 20 PMR. So anyway, I went in the middle, 35 PMR, uh, which would have been £603.75. So our total came to £1,301.60 to have that car back as it stands and have to put everything back right again so i sent that off and didn't hear anything for a couple of days and in the end the customer decided she would take the deduction and we would buy the car back and um yeah she didn't want it back again so that is what we've done basically and since agreeing that she has come in and dropped off to the v5 so that is that it's not an ideal situation but um you know you know i think we fixed it now can we really argue of it we didn't figure that out in the first place because it was never really an issue that we could find just one of those awkward things. I'm not trying to be awkward, but it's just awkward because we couldn't find a fault, which is why we sent it to the gearbox place. And they have said next time, book in via us because they will try and find the more kind of practical solution rather than just giving the customer a worst case scenario. So lessons learned. I'm learning them all the time, it would seem. But that is it for this video anyway. I hope you enjoyed it, giving a little insight into, you know, the more mundane and less enjoyable side of being a car dealer. But, you know, you have to get used to it, unfortunately. That's just the way it goes. And sometimes the path of least resistance is the best one to take so that you can crack on with other things that are going to make you money. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're one of my subscribers, when we hit 75,000, I'm giving away a £2,000 tag for your watch. And I'm going to pick one of you at random. It's completely free to do, so why not? Don't forget that top-down link as well, Hot Deal 20 Head over, all the links will be in the description so you can get those checked out, you can get a bargain on those. That's it for this time, I'll see you next time. <laughs>